Hey everybody, it's Kathy Clotes Guest, and I'm doing just a quick little video today. It's not our regularly scheduled Yes and Brand show, that's on Fridays. But I wanted to talk about something today, just really briefly, because it's something that keeps coming up. And I wrote about this post about a couple months ago, a couple months ago, and I had a conversation about it just yesterday after a speaking gig that I did. And this is a really important thing. I just want to leave you this really quick thought. And that is what your goal is when you're speaking. When you're a speaker, whether you're doing training in a workshop, whether you're doing keynote speaking, hey Dave, whether you're doing anything, whether you're doing live stream video, and that is the big thing you can never forget is having empathy for your audience. What do you want your audience to feel? What do you want them to think about? What do you want them to do? Now, a lot of people will say, think, feel, do. I don't think it's that way. I think it's feel, think, do. What do you want your audience to feel? They feel something first and then they rationalize it in their frontal cortex. So make them feel good about whatever information it is you're giving them. And you can never break the pact. A speaker has a pact with the audience and it's sacrosanct. And when you break that pact, you lose your audience. So I was giving a keynote back uh, uh, in late fall of last year, right before the holidays hit. And I was promoting my book and it was a beautiful event. It, I had a great time. And after, right after my, my keynote, one of the sp first speakers after me did something that you never do. And the audience just gasped. The audience gasped. You could hear it, it was audible, and it was like a pin drop. You could hear a pin drop, and she lost the audience. So here's what happened. She asked for questions, and somebody in the audience raised his hand and asked a question. And she said to him, that's not a good question. Ask me another one. That's a stupid question. You heard right. She put this audience member down. She made him feel stupid. She made him feel less than. You're there as a speaker because of your expertise, but it's not your expertise that keeps people coming back. What keeps people coming back is the way you make them feel. Did you make them feel inspired? Did you make them feel better than when they came? Did you give them some kind of advice that's transformative? Did you make them feel like they could conquer anything? Did you make them feel good about themselves? Did you entertain them? Did you make them laugh? If you insult your audience, and I don't care if it's comedy, I've been doing comedy for many years, I've been speaking on stages many years. If you insult your audience without provocation, nobody's heckling you, without provocation, if you insult your audience, you never get them back. And what was really interesting, yeah, Dave, wow, is right. That's what happened. And the audience, she lost the connection with the audience and she could not get it back. So then she said, are there other questions? Can I take any other questions? Well, gee, go figure, not one hand shot up. Well, why would they? So that they could be treated like that? What she did was inexcusable. It wasn't okay. He was asking a question. He's not an expert. And then she proceeded to say, well, I hate getting that question because I'm an expert and it's just so obvious. Yes, to you, but your job, your job is to pass on that expertise and help somebody else. Your job is to not feel better than anybody else. And if that's your attitude as a speaker, you don't deserve to be on a stage anywhere because it's a privilege to be able to connect with that audience. And what was really funny is she walked over afterwards, after I think she realized what had happened, and she tried to give this gentleman, hey, Chris, how you doing? She tried to give this gentleman a book. She tried to hand him a copy of her book. And he's like, I don't want it. And she said, are you sure? And he said, I'm sure. I don't want your book. She could not give away copies of her book. Nobody wanted it. Why would they? So really important thing. It seems like so obvious and so simple, but you have a pact with the audience, whether you're on a comedy stage, whether you're on a business stage, whatever stage you're on, is to make that audience feel good, to make them laugh, to make them inspired, to make them walk away with something really important. What you can never do, you never use the stage as a bully pulpit. That's not what you're there for. Now, 
I've done comedy for years. I don't get heckled much, but when I was first starting out, I did get heckled. And I put a stop to that. And I shut that guy up very quickly. And he never heckled anybody else throughout the whole show. But if you're not being heckled and you don't have a detractor who's asking some kind of jerky question, you have no right to put the audience down. And this is really a super important point and I can't emphasize it enough. Because once you make that audience feel stupid, dumb, that you're better than that audience and you insult your audience, you break a connection that you never ever get back. She never got it back. That was done. Everybody in the front row where this gentleman was sitting and I was sitting next to him, everybody <gasps> collectively gasped and she just never recovered. She never recovered. How could she? She had burned trust with that audience. Would you trust somebody who made you feel stupid? Here's the thing, when you're on a stage, you're there by virtue of the fact that you have expertise to share or you wouldn't be there. Of course you might know more than people in the audience. That's the point. It's your expertise that got you there. But your expertise won't get you invited back. How you make that audience feel gets you invited back. So make that audience feel inspired, feel great, feel good about themselves, feel entertained, feel like they can do anything. And what was really interesting to me was that I, after the day was done, I went out. I was invited to go out with the event committee. And we went to a local brew pub. And I stayed and I talked with everybody. And everybody said to me, you made me feel good, Kathy. You made me feel good. Like I was inspired. Like I could do anything in storytelling. You made me feel that way. And that other speaker made me feel horrible. That's why you get invited back. Because you make the audience feel good. So do yourself a favor. Before you speak, before you go live on video, how do you want to make the audience feel? What tip do you want to leave them? Do you want to leave them laughing? How do you want to impart that information and how do you want to show up? More importantly, more than having the audience think, it's the wrong organ. Hey Lucinda, more than that, the honest truth is, it's how you make people feel. So I always like to do, here's a little tip. It's really nerdy, but hey, uh, Shock of shocks, I'm a nerd. <laughs> There's something called an empathy map and it's a really quick exercise. Before you go into a meeting, before you go to speak, really check in with yourself about your speaking engagement before you go live on video. What's the problem I'm helping people solve? What tip do I wanna give and how do I wanna make people feel? What's tough in their life and how can I make them feel better? What's one or two tips that I can leave that's going to make them feel better about things and make them feel validated and make them feel like they can do anything. So I want you to write that down and I don't want you to get too intellectual. I don't want you to think about data points. What's the audience feeling about their problem and how are you going to make them feel better? And one of the ways that you can connect with them is say, hey, I'm overwhelmed too. I'm overwhelmed with all the information coming at me just like you are. I'm no different. And you know what? Here's how I handle it. That's empathy. Empathy and status. And using that same I connect with you way to really have a conversation with your audience. So just really quick thing. Um, hey, Chris. It's something that we were having a conversation with yesterday after I did a live speaking engagement. And it, was, it brought me to the story that happened last November about what this speaker had done and how she lost the audience. And I promise you, I promise you this. You don't have to be the most brilliant, scintillating speaker, but if you make the audience feel great after you walk away, you'll be invited back. It's not your expertise ever that gets you invited back. And this speaker somehow didn't get the memo that because she thought she was better than everybody and that she shamed the audience for not knowing the answer to these things. But you never, never put down your audience. You never make them feel less than. Never, never. That's irresponsible. And I, I, I'm old school about these things. If you think that's the job of a speaker, then I don't think you belong on a stage. Because your job as a speaker, you're there by virtue of the fact to make that audience learn something. And that's a pact. That to me, that's just a social pact with your audience. So don't ever break it. That's really, really important. It's a social construct. It's like Halloween. You show up, say trick or treat, I give you candy. If we don't abide by the system, chaos reigns. Everything breaks down. <laughs> we need this. We need this. 
Hey, Priya. Hey, Lisa. It's good to see everybody. And Chris, oh my gosh. So happy to have you from the UK. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think, if you guys got any thoughts on that. But that to me, I wanted to, to pass that on because that is the worst thing I think I've ever seen a speaker do. And that will ruin your speaking career. It will ruin your thing with the audience. It, I, I cannot say that enough. And it didn't matter how smart she was. She was very smart about video. She knew video really well. But the minute you insult your audience and make them feel stupid and make them feel like you're better than them, that's gone. That human connection is gone. And you know what? Like certain, uh, like, you know, summer outfits that we wish would be back in fashion, it ain't coming back. <laughs> so don't do that to your audience. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. It is a great message for speakers. I wish speakers would do this. I wish they'd spend some time thinking about what do I want the audience to feel? And when I go and I do a keynote, and for this particular, um, it was the visual storytelling conference. I wanted people to feel good. I wanted to inspire people. I wanted people to feel like they can do anything. And that was my intention. And I really wanted to stick to that. Um, Gary, yeah, totally agree. I think it says a lot about them. It does say a lot about them. And I really honestly didn't feel sorry for her because um, I, I, my empathy went to the audience member who had been completely embarrassed and humiliated. And that's where my empathy went and that's where the audience empathy flowed. And once that happens, it doesn't matter what tips you're getting, the audience tuned out. Um, it, you might as well have just stopped speaking at that point. Yes, yeah, so it reminds you of the, of the quote, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, always treat your audience as smart, Priya. Oh my God, I'm so with you. One of the things, and Gary, who's my improviser friend, and I love me some Gary wear, um, we were trained, at, we're trained in improv to not only play to the height of your intelligence, but play to the height of the audience's intelligence. Don't pander. Treat your audience as smart. Treat your audience as caring people. Have empathy. Remember that it's not about you. You know, if you're giving data because you think it's all about you, then, th you know, that's not what it's about. So expertise gets you the, the speaking gig, but expertise will not get you a return request unless you make that audience feel good. And that's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. When I did my keynote, did I give tons and tons of data? No, I gave a few nuggets. But I was really more concerned about the experience. I had them do interactive activities and they had a great time. And everybody said, you made me feel like I had a fun and that I was inspired. And I, I set my intention for the day to play. And that was a great feeling um, because they remember, they remember how you make them feel, you know, as Maya Angelou so brilliantly put it, they, people remember how you make them feel. So all the intelligence in the world won't get you invited back as a speaker. So never break your covenant. That's a speaker contract with that audience. And it's a really important one. You're there to make them feel good and never break that. Never break that. If you know, there's no stupid question. Um, if you don't understand a question, make them repeat it, but there's no stupid question. And I always go out of my way to make sure that the audience knows that there is no stupid question, just anything. You could ask me anything and I'll have a laugh at it. And you know, if I don't understand it, I'll ask you to reframe it, but there's no stupid question. Um, you're, you are the expert. You're supposed to know more than the audience. So, you know, it's not about, look at me. I'm so smart. <laughs> yes. Make your audience feel smart. Well said. Well said, everybody. By the way, I just wanted to pass on that tip. Just a really quick reminder of, uh, I think if you, if you go in with, it, with that empathy towards your audience and how they feel, I promise you, you won't go wrong. And, and have fun. Just go in and have fun. And if things break down and things fail um, and you lose your technology and your slides crash, it's all good. Just have fun. Know your audience and know your message inside out that you don't need slides. So just have fun. Don't take yourself so seriously. You can take what you do seriously, but you don't have to take yourself so seriously. And I think that's really the biggest tip. Um, none of us are impressed by people who spew facts at us. We're impressed by people that make us feel that human connection. So you got it. You guys are all brilliant. You already know that, but since, uh, that was probably the worst horrific sin I've ever seen a speaker commit. Uh, uh, I just thought I, it's worth talking about. And I'll post a link to that uh, link, uh, LinkedIn article that I wrote up. I wrote up a little piece on it. And I heard from a lot of speakers everywhere. Seems like everybody has seen a speaker commit this cardinal sin. That's the one cardinal sin. You can recover from a lot of stuff. Technology crashes, losing your place, a bad joke. Um, you can recover from a lot of stuff. But if you insult your audience, game over. 
<laughs> game over. All right, everybody, have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow. Don't forget, Yes Ann Brand is at 10 a.m. Pacific, and I'm going to announce the winners of the Boring Busting Awards. We had 211 people vote, and I'm going to announce what brands that you all thought were the least boring. So, all right, everybody, have a fantastic day. Thank you, thank you, bye.